And now we dive into facewear. Super cool. KG, would you be able to pause right here? Yes, ma'am. Awesome. So as a quick little recap, uh, this portion is very, very straightforward. So I just want to do like a quick little recap of what exactly I'm going to do. Uh, so just to get started, I'm selecting my main uh, ADA asset. I'm going to go ahead and create a child blueprint. Once I do this, I am now working with just that blueprint. I'm going to rename it to ADA Facewear. Once I have that done, I'm going to go into my details panel. I'm going to select face. I'm going to turn my animation asset to blueprint. And then from there, I'm going to select my, my special facewear metahuman blueprint. Uh, once I go and select my blueprint, I am then going to add my facewear live component. Now, the, this facewear live component, um, this is available through the Glassbox plugin live client. This is something that is available on the Glassbox website. It, they do offer a free 15 day trial. Uh, so, you know, you're absolutely free to go on there, uh, sign up, and you can download this free for 15 days. Uh, in order to have access to the blueprint, you will have to go to our website at faceweartech.com. Uh, on our support page, you will be able to download those blueprints for free. And with that, KJ, you may continue. And playing back. Cool. So I'm going to create that child blueprint right now. I'm renaming that to Aid of Facewear. Now I'm going to select my asset. I'm going to bring it into the scene. And now I'm going to go down to Face. I'm double checking that my animation asset has been set and my blueprint has been set below. And I'm gonna add my face for live component. Now here's very important. I am making sure that my port number is set to 802. This is very important because over in studio that has also been set to 802. So if you're having any streaming issues, this is one of the main things you wanna troubleshoot. And then with that, once I start playing, we have face. So now moving over, oh, and this is our glass box. Uh, the Glassbox plugin where you can download the plugin uh, for Facewear Live. And now with that, we're going to go ahead and move over to Studio. So Face um, KJ, would you be able to quickly pause right over here? Absolutely. All right, so a quick overview of Studio. So I know before I brought this up and I mentioned uh, the port number and being able to make sure that that matches, you're probably thinking, okay, well, maybe I haven't touched Studio. What the heck is Studio? Well, Studio is the application we are using for the actual live streaming. So on the left side here, I have already pre-recorded a range of motion for KJ. For those of you who are, you know, perhaps just kind of getting into the mocap scene, um, as a quick summary, a range of motion or a ROM will be something you would have to pre-record to uh, record all of your talent's most extreme expressions. Now, this is very, very important. This is where you want your talent to really hit those super extreme expressions. You don't want them to hit like a soft smile and then later on uh, perform a much more exaggerated smile uh, because what I am going to show you guys is how to utilize your range of motion and tune or tune your character and create a profile. Uh, you will have to create a profile and do this process every time you have a different character with a different talent. Um, if KJ were to you, or if I were to use KJ's range of motion with a different character, I'll have to redo the profile depending on the architecture of that rig. So once I open up Studio, I went ahead and clicked on Media. So this way I can upload over on the left side an input type. So this way I can select my pre recorded video. There's also an option next to Media where you'll click Live. So you can immediately use your live camera input. So that would naturally be the camera in front of KJ on the HMC. Uh, below, you have your resolution and your frame rate options. Keep in mind, it is extremely important that you have a very high frame rate when using Studio. We recommend not going anywhere below 40 frames per second. Uh, what I'm going to do now is go over the actual tuning process. So as a quick little explanation, tuning is basically me sort of editing how Ada is or how all those motions are being translated onto Ada. So for example, if KJ gives me a big wide open jaw and I notice on Ada her jaw is almost maybe halfway while KJ's is really exaggerated, well then I'm gonna wanna go into my mouth group, find my jaw open, and then I'm going to want to ump that value. So this way, um, the roughly the amount of length that KJ's jaw is going down would roughly match how Ada would. So this way the performance is matching as closely as it can to a one-to-one. -one. And with that, KJ, you may continue. Playing back. So here I'm just doing a quick little time lapse 
uh, just kind of playing around with all my different tuning adjustments. As you can see, there is a different slider for each shape, uh, face shape. Uh, this is where you're really going to want to use your artistic eye. Um, if you want, typically, uh, if you're someone who's more on a technician or operator side uh, and you haven't had much um, opportunity to really sort of do anything more related to like animation, you're definitely going to want to bring in someone who has, you know, a little bit of that artistic eye where they can kind of look from side to side and kind of say like, okay, well, you know what, I think this shape looks pretty good or, hey, I'm using my best judgment here. Uh, maybe it's not quite the exact one-to-one, -one, but I'm I'm happy with this smile or I'm happy with this frown and I like how this is being translated. So because this could be a bit more of an, I would say like a little artsy process, there's a lot of going back and forth. There is no uh, perfect how-to. This is really just kind of up to your best judgment. So for me, I'm going really high per or perhaps really low on my, brow down left, but maybe if I go to a different expression, I notice, oh, I actually have to bump that up a little bit. So it's a lot of back and forth. So you definitely want to commit some time in the profiling step. Uh, as I scrub through KJ's range of motion, I'm stopping at the most exaggerated expression. So this is where I want to tune in um, my character. So this is why it's very important to make sure your talent is hitting those super, super exaggerated expressions because once someone goes in and begins to profile them, you don't want to miss any of that additional information and then later on have the talent uh, perform something even grander than their grandest performance during the ROM because uh, the results can be unpredictable. So you definitely want to make sure you get like those super wild expressions in there as much as possible. Um, on that right side, you probably also notice these little red landmarks. Those red landmarks is Studio letting you know um, how much it's tracking that specific face shape. Uh, so right now you see that little red dot under jaw open is really um, in that second half there. So that's telling, so KJ is telling Studio that it's really hitting those high values for jaw. Uh, so I might not have to adjust my value too much since I already see that Studio is already getting a really high value out of the box as is. So yeah, just kind of going back and forth. Now, once you get through the tuning process, now typically we recommend just tuning alone uh, to really adjust some of your character's expressions, but you do have an option of using our motion effects. Now, during this time, it can be a bit more involved. This is where you want to go in and you can create your own customized scripts and how one expression might react with another one. Uh, there's a couple of little options you have there. We typically recommend you go through the tuning process first, see if you get what you need, um, and then apply those additional layers later on. So right now, now that I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and save my profile for KJ. I'm going to go into my motion effects. So KJ, would you actually be able to... Let's pause right, actually give it two seconds. Right here, let's pause it right here. Um, great, so what I'm gonna do right here, now just keep in mind, uh, motion effects, as I mentioned before, they're adding extra layers of logic to help um, into your character's performance. So what I'm gonna do, just as a quick little example, I'm gonna go ahead and select my, perhaps my cheek squint left, and then I'm going to select my increase by motion. Um, as my corresponding, uh, face shape, I'm going to say maybe smile left. This way, every time Ada is using that smile left value, it is also increasing my che my cheek squint left. I would want to do this if I want, you know, a little bit of that extra smile or, you know, just something a little bit more interesting if I want to play around with that. So with that, KJ, you can go ahead and continue the video. Blank back. So now I'm selecting my cheeks went left, my increase by. Now, if you go on our support page on our Facewear uh, website, we do have a full documentation on all these different kind of combinations you can do. I definitely recommend experimenting as much as possible. Uh, something we might suggest for something might actually be a bit more useful for something else. So, you know, definitely reach out to us if you have any questions.